the other issue I think that that is really front and foremost for investors with NVIDIA is valuation, right? And so how are you balancing? And nobody knows the sort of the, the details of, I've, I think, this this sector and in the NVIDIA story better than you. So how are you balancing the fundamentals versus this valuation question? And I'll, I'll share an anecdote. We, we just had Jim Bianco on and he was talking about, um, you know, just broadly the equity market and some valuations. And he was at a, a cocktail party and uh, someone, they, they were all talking about how they own NVIDIA. And he just asked them like, oh, what do they do? And like, I don't know, but it's a five billion, it's up 500% this year. And he's like, yeah, but what do they do? And they had no idea, nor did they care. <laughs> You know, so it's just like sort of retail chasing the momentum of a really, really high performing stock. And I think that makes people worried about some of the valuations around NVIDIA. So how do you balance those two things? Yes. Well, in brief, uh, NVIDIA is no longer a chip company. It's a rack scale systems company. Um, that means that it's a little bit of software in those systems. There's networking. It is how GPUs communicate to other GPUs, that is why this stock will remain investable for the foreseeable future. Mm -hmm. um, and the more GPUs you can combine that think like one GPU, the higher up you can go in training models. Um, now you can break through from, let's say, a couple hundred billion parameter model to a one trillion parameter model. AI models can get smarter and smarter. Um, they are the parallel processing uh, king. And that means that they introduce something called tensor cores that allows things like matrix multiplications, um, floating point precision. These little features are not features, these massive features, transformer engine, they have created a lead around training that is insurmountable. Yeah. Uh, and the reason that they were able to do all of that is they were so close to parallel processing from day one with gaming. And then they just belt out more parallel processing power for AI. And uh, now when you look at what's different about NVIDIA and how the AI economy will be belt out versus something like mobile, or maybe very similar to mobile, actually, maybe I can make an analogy here if I think about it. Uh, I believe those that are that deeply entrenched in the hardware stack like NVIDIA will also be dominant players in software. Um, you can think of this as Apple being very dominant with the iPhone, but also dominant with iOS and then having an app store, something similar to that. I, I don't want to pull a perfect analogy other than uh, the fact that there's more to this story than just uh, you know, a single chip. And when I think about valuation, that's just like a broader thing. Like NVIDIA is not a chip company. Um, I just want to throw that out there. It's an AI systems company. Uh, it's powering all of AI training because of those significant advantages on product, uh, specifically parallel processing power. And they have a leg up, a first mover advantage when it comes to AI software, which will be as big as hardware. So <laughs> uh, boy, like, how could I, how, how yeah, could I like, emphasize underscore exclamation point, exclamation yeah. point? Like, yeah, this, this is so, and that's a huge statement.